uh, we've seen Will Cheddar's minutes uh, increase over the course of this year. What have you seen from him? What have you What have you guys been liking as a coaching staff from him? Well, he brings incredible energy. Uh, really impacts the game with this his effort. You know, hustle plays. He's been very consistent defensively with uh, the way he talks on the floor. And, uh, he's been a real uh, big spark plug for us, and we're going to need him to continue to do that for our team. Howard, it looked like uh, Kobe Bufkin got popped in the face at the end of the, of the last game. Is he doing all right? Uh, yeah, Kobe's doing fine. You know, he a little bumps and bruises, but he'll be okay to go tomorrow. Um, you guys took care of Minnesota at their place. Uh, what do you have to do at home to make sure you get the same result? I think it's going to start on the defensive end for us. I mean, really come out and establish a, a defensive presence. You know, Minnesota really have a lot of talented players on their team, so we can't take them lightly based on what happened the first time. So we really have to come out and establish ourselves defensively. And uh, and let that you know create our offense for us. Hey Howard, I have a couple of questions that are maybe a little not basketball related, I guess. But after Thursday's game at Maryland, Doug seemed to receive some criticism from fans on social media, and he kind of tweeted about it how he's quickly gone from a fan favorite to the worst player. Uh, I guess as coaches, I guess how do you approach things like that and make sure you know your players don't let the post game social media reaction kind of affect them mentally? Well, the best advice we can give them is, you know, it's obviously after the games are very emotional. So probably not to really respond, definitely not that, but not even read it. You know, give yourself some time to really take a deep breath and get away and have an understanding of what just happened and, you know, let your emotions come down back to where you're even killed before you respond here, if you respond. My advice to him would be not to respond, not to get into dialogue like that, because nothing really positive can come from it, especially when you're <laughs> conversing with people you, you don't even know who they are. Right, and I know some guys it might it might bother them. I guess as a coach, how do you feel about it when you hear? I mean, some of these messages that can sometimes be harsh that the players kind of receive on social media nowadays. I mean, that's the world we live in now. So the only way that you combat that is by not engaging it and not reading it. Um, I would be probably the best way to go about it. But I do understand, you know, this day and age, people like the interaction or or the engagement, as they call it. But I really believe the best way to really stay focused on the task at hand is not to not to read it, not to be involved in that platform. I know, obviously, social media wasn't prevalent back in your college days. I guess just how do you feel like um, it would have been like if you had to deal with that when you're when you're playing? I'm just happy I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Have you seen uh, a lot of changes from Minnesota since the last meeting? They've already secured a big win at Ohio State. They build a little bit of momentum. Anything you've seen schematically or, or whatnot that you guys are preparing for for the second meeting of the year? I think they're playing a lot better. I think they really simplified a lot of the stuff that they were doing. Uh, I think guys are playing with a lot more confidence. I know the first game battle was just recently coming back from injury. I think he's feeling more comfortable. Um, you know, they changed their lineup a little bit. So I, I really think they are, uh, are gelling better as a unit, as a team. But I think those guys are just playing more comfortable and uh, understanding their roles right now. Howard, outside of Arizona State, every loss has been a close loss. I know that it's a young team, it's a, it's a young backcourt, and those are factors. But outside of that, is there something that kind of ties the thread of of all these close losses together that you guys can identify? Uh, you know, I think all those things you just mentioned contributes to it. But I think the one thing that we need to do better as as a team, uh, coach and staff included, is really hammer home the attention to detail, especially, you know, late in games. Uh, you know, it's been one or two plays that has really cost us uh, in those losses. And even some of our wins, you know, we've had opportunity to extend leads or really put ourselves in a, 
uh, games that we shouldn't have been close. So I really think we have to really pay more attention to details. And, you know, with such a young group, it's, it's really challenging to do that all the time and consistently. And I think that's the area we need to grow in. Hey, Howard, uh, the last time you played Minnesota, that was Doug's first start, um, you know, but that, that was now, I don't know, six weeks ago or something like that. How, how has he kind of progressed, you know, since then, now that he's, yeah, taken, taken that starting job and kind of ran with it? I think Doug is, is fine. Uh, you know, every game presents a different challenge for him. Um, but I think he's up for the challenge. He has a very high basketball IQ and a great feel for the game. And I think what he's learning is, is being consistent and being able to do it every every night you take the court. And to before, maybe Minnesota didn't even have him on the scouting report. Who knows? But now, you know, as the starter, he's on the scouting report and people are really zooming in on, you know, strengths and weaknesses with him. So being more consistent and continue to, to grow and learn as much as he can. You know, we all used to, uh, the phrase of uh, being thrown into the fire where, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for him to, to learn and to grow. And, you know, my hope for him and for our team is in the next six weeks, he's better than where he was the first six weeks. So that's, that's the goal. And that's what we're, we're looking forward to. Um, at, at Maryland, even though it was a loss, it looked like Terrence Williams was playing with some newfound confidence, one of his better games of the season. I guess, what do you think that does for him going forward? Uh, I, I hope it, it continues to elevate his game. You know, he made some big plays for us, uh, seeing the ball go in the basket. Um, you know, he's really big for us and key for us because he's one of the few guys that does have experience in playing in big games. And, you know, he brings a certain level of toughness and understanding to what we're trying to do. So we love having him on the floor and we just need him to continue and to be consistent in, in what he brings to our team. And I, I think he plays a major part in what we do and what we're looking to do. So hopefully he can continue to, to feel more comfortable and confident in, in what we're doing. Hey, Howard, is there anything interesting that you've learned coaching alongside uh, Saudi and Phil and, and the staff here? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, any anything interesting you've learned as a coach just coaching alongside Saudi Washington and, and Phil uh, in your time here at Michigan? Uh, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot, and I think that's the beauty of uh, uh, this job is that you don't stop learning and and the ability to continue to grow as a coach, I think is most important. Like we, we got Coach Phil, who's been coaching probably longer than some of us, been out of diapers, right? So to be able to be a, along him and, and pick his brain and, and, and learn, and I think that's one of the beauties of our staff is we have an egoless staff and we learn from each other and we all try to continue to grow and be best versions of ourselves so you know we try to learn every day and there's certain plays or in the game situations you know we talk through them and see you know what may be your philosophy or his philosophy and try to figure out what's you know the best way to handle and tackle those situations yeah hey howard you mentioned uh jameson battle earlier he's uh and how he's sort of been coming along this year uh, obviously not the numbers that we're used to him putting up the last couple of seasons, but when on the scouting report, do you still treat him like the the Jameson battle who was shooting almost 38% from three and putting up 18 points a game last year? Absolutely. Uh, one thing we know about him, he is very capable and he is a, a difficult matchup depending on how they're using. Uh, he can play multiple positions and he has great ability on the basketball floor. So can't take him lightly. You cannot take him for granted because he is a very capable and three-level scorer that, you know, he can shoot the ball, he can put it on the floor and get downhill, and he can finish at the basket and has a good mid-range game. So he's definitely a guy that, you know, we want to lock in on and know where he is on the floor at all times. Yeah, I think he went 0 for 9 from the field last time. Is that almost something you wish, like, didn't happen? 
before you play him because it's like oh man like <laughs> you know how that goes on the other side no i, I do i do but uh last time he was in this building <laughs> he really had a big night so you know he came in here and felt comfortable so he's gonna have confidence uh when he was in here last time so again a d defensive mindset for us and really come in jumping on these guys and really being physical and setting a defensive tone of the game will be very important for us. Coach, can you talk about how, uh, you know, this young team is now facing the second go around with all these teams? Is that a little bit easier for preparation? Um, does it help that they're familiar with matchups, et cetera? I think it does. Um, just because they is, they've been through it already. Um, you know, obviously it didn't help us against Maryland, but, you know, as we all know, going on the road and winning in this, in this league is very tough and difficult. So, again, I think that was another example of something that we could learn from and not to think because you won one game it's going to translate to a W again. So uh, I think with them coming in our building and being able to have an understanding of what they're trying to do um, and their matchups and reading the scouting report, I think it will be helpful. But again, you still got to go out and play the game and you still got to go out and execute the things that we've been talking about. And that's something that we really have to continue to grow in and execute you no know, game plans, both offensively and defensively. With, you know, the media uh, mentioned before just about some of the close losses and, we have had several games on the road. Do you think this could be a good time to have five of the next seven at Chrysler? You know, because everybody has juice at home and plays a little better at home. Do you think that's a like a good stretch for this team right now? Uh, I I love when we have home games. Uh, you be able to get you know a comfortable environment, you know the setting. Um, but more than that, you have to take care of business at home. So as much as it is that you're familiar and you think just because you're home it's going to translate you have to take care of business at home and this will be a big stretch for us and really knowing that we have to win home games in this league to be successful so you really have to continue to really lock in and and hopefully not take it for granted just because we're at home we will win does anybody have anything else for coach Okay, H, we're all set. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great Saturday afternoon.